Okay, let's actually calculate depreciation together so we can practice getting the calculations right. I encourage you to speed me up or slow me down and work through this with me. And then I want you to have a go on another spreadsheet, try to complete that, and then I'll debrief it with you. So let's work through three types of depreciation and the calculations. Whenever we're looking at calculating depreciation, we typically need to know at least three things. We need to know the cost or purchase price. In this case, we're going to assume the purchase price was $25,000. We need to know how long we expect to use the asset in the business. We call that the useful life. And in this case, we're saying it's eight years. And then we need to know if there's any scrap or residual value to that asset at the end of its useful life, in this case, eight years. And we're going to assume that it's zero. Now, what we then need to do is we need to spread the expense of the asset over the useful life. Again, we're using the matching principle here. So what we typically will do is let's, we'll start with the opening balance, which is 25,000. And then we have to calculate the depreciation expense. Now I'm going to do it the long way and the formula is on the right, but it is equal to the cost always minus the scrap value. And I know that's zero, but for completeness, let's put the full formula in. We're gonna then divide that by its useful life. Now, one thing I wanna do is I wanna lock that down. So I'm gonna just hit F4. I'm just gonna get those dollar signs in so I can copy it down. But you can see the cost is 3,125. Now, let's imagine, though, that the scrap value at the end of eight years was, I don't know, 5,000. Our formula then updates, and basically we're saying there's only 20,000 of expense over eight years, so we'll divide that up, and the amount each year will be 2,500. Okay, so let's put that back to zero. Our closing balance on our balance sheet is going to be the opening balance, simply minus the depreciation expense. Now we're going to, our opening balance is going to be the closing balance. Our depreciation expense isn't changed. So I just did control D fill down and our closing balance will be the opening balance minus the depreciation expense. And then I'm going to highlight this. I'm just going to copy it down. I'm using the shortcut control D. And you can see in the trick to make sure you got the calculation right is that at the end of the useful life, the closing balance should be the scrap value or residual value, which in this case we've already said is zero. Let me change that again to 5,000. And you can see the depreciation still works because at the end of the useful life, the value is 5,000, which is what we expect to sell it for. Okay, so let me set that to zero. Now let's move on to double declining. Here we have the same purchase price, scrap value, and useful life. The opening balance is going to be what we first paid for it. Now the depreciation expense, the formula you can see on the right. And what we want to do is we're going to go equals, and I'm going to go 100%, divided by the useful life of the asset. I'm going to use F4 to put dollar signs and lock that reference so I can copy it down. Then I'm going to multiply it by 2. And then I multiply that by the opening balance. We have 6250. Our closing balance is simply the opening balance minus the depreciation expense. Our opening balance for period two is the closing balance for period one. I'm going to copy this down, control D, shortcut for fill down. And I'm going to go control D again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight row 32 and I'm going to Highlight down and just go control D to complete that depreciation expense using the double declining method. Now, one of the things to note, recall, is that we're using this where we think more of the asset is used up in earlier years. So we're trying to spread that expense based on how we expect to use the asset. Okay, so now we've done double declining. Let's look at units of production. I'm just going to scroll up. Okay, so again, same type of basic information. Purchase price is the same, scrap value is the same, and useful life is the same. Our formula is here. Let's fill this in. And the way we are spreading this expense is basically on how the equipment is going to be used in production. So what we're saying is 
there is going to be 50,000s of units produced over eight years, and we expect 2,000 units to be produced in year one or period one, 3,500 in period two, and so on. We've also already done the calculation of what percent of total product or product or units are represented by each year. So 2,000 divided by 50,000 is 4%, or in other words, 4% of our total units will be produced in the first period. So we're going to take 4% of the expense. So the opening balance is always going to be the purchase price to begin with, but our depreciation expense is going to be the number of units produced divided by the lifetime number of units, but we've already done that. That's 4%, but we're going to multiply it by the cost minus the scrap value, which we know in this case is zero. And we're going to record a depreciation expense of 1,000. Our closing balance is simply the opening balance minus the depreciation expense. And our opening balance is the closing balance from the period before. I'm going to copy down Control D, the depreciation expense for period two. Why is it more? It's because 7% relates to that year. Our closing balance, I'll copy down. Whoops. Control D. And then I'll copy this all down. Very much like our first depreciation exercise, we know we've done this right if at the end of the eight years, the balance here matches our scrap value, which we know is zero. Let's just test that. Let's put scrap value of 5,000 in. And again, you can see our depreciation expense has gone down each period, but that's because we expect to sell the asset at the end of its useful life for 5,000. Okay, let's practice with depreciation expense again. I'm hoping that you have already had a go. If you haven't, I encourage you to pause the video, have a go, and then we can debrief this together. We're gonna to do the same three. We're gonna do straight line, double declining, and units of production. Okay, so let's start with our straight line. Here we have slightly different purchase prices, scrap values, and useful lives. We have a purchase price of 35,000. We think the asset will be used in our business for five years. And at the end of five years, we think the asset will be able to be sold for 2,725. So our opening balance when we buy the asset, of course, is the purchase price. Our depreciation expense for straight line is relatively straightforward. We just take equals the purchase price. Make sure you put those dollar signs in there. I use F4 minus the scrap value, which is really representing the expense that we need to spread over the useful life. And then we're going to divide it by the useful life. And again, F4, make sure those dollar signs are there. And then we can just copy it down. Um, so our depreciation expense is going to be 6,455. Our closing balance for the period is simply the opening balance minus the depreciation expense. The opening balance for the next period is the closing balance from the previous period. We can copy down the depreciation expense. We know it's straight line, so it should be the exact same number. And then we can copy it all down. And we know we've done it right if at the end of the useful life, the amount that's the closing balance matches the scrap value, which was 2725. Now let's do double declining. Let me scroll up. Okay. So with our double declining, our opening balance always starts with our purchase price. Our depreciation expense, though, is equals 100% divided by the useful life. I'm going to put dollar signs there to lock the reference. Multiplied by 2, and then we're going to multiply it by the opening balance. And I'm not going to put dollar signs there because I want that cell reference to move. Our closing balance is the opening balance minus the depreciation expense. The opening balance for the next period is the closing balance for the previous one. I'm going to copy that down, control D, copy that down. And then I'm going to copy this all down. And you can see at the end of the period, uh, of period five in particular, we do have a closing balance. The key thing with double declining that you might have noticed in the previous exercise in this one is it doesn't necessarily match the scrap value, and it's because of the calculation itself and how we expense more early on.
However, for units of production and for straight line, we always know at the end of the useful life, the amount that we see as the closing balance should be the scrap value. So now let's go to units of production. Here we have 6% of units produced in period one, 10% in period two, and we wanna spread the expense of the asset based on how many units or percent of units are produced each period. So our opening balance, again, at the start is always our purchase price. Our depreciation expense is going to be 6% of the expense, which is, of course, the purchase price, lock down that with dollar signs, minus any scrap value. Our closing balance is our opening balance minus the depreciation expense. Our opening balance for the next period is the closing balance from the period before. I can go control D, fill down, control D, fill down. My depreciation expense is significantly more in period two, but that does make sense. It's 10%. If I copy this down just one year, again, that year it's 6%, so it should match our period one. I'll copy the rest down using control D. I know we've got it right because the scrap value as the closing balance is 2725.